Hi everyone. This video should give you a quick overview of Life Assist 9.5 and how to operate basic functions. I'll show you how to configure your video I.O., inputs and outputs, and perform simple record and playback tasks. Let's start in the setup panel. Here we define several settings of our setup. First, create a new project, select resolution and frame rate, and open the video I.O. menu. In here, we can select the device we want to configure. This can also be a virtual SDI card, like the NDI device here, which allows us to configure up to four input and four output channels. Let me select my Decklink card here. As you can see, it can do two channels, one input, one output. As a side note, AJA hardware is also supported equally on macOS and on Windows, as well as webcam-like devices and capture cards. You can even mix capture devices from different manufacturers if need be and your hardware allows. Now that we've set up our video I.O., let's jump into the Monitors tab. Here Life Assist lists all available outputs. I can for instance set display LUTs or enable guides to show on any of the outputs. I'll leave the view to custom channel for each one for now, but I could also dedicate one monitor to show a video wall of all inputs or cameras. A quite important function is the dual head option here on the right. If enabled, I can use a second monitor attached to the GPU as an output. This output will be almost latency free as opposed to outputting via video I.O. Instead of a second monitor, I could also connect an AJA HA5 4K HDMI to SDI converter, which will be seen as a UHD monitor by the OS. If I now set this dual head output to video wall, I can send up to four cameras in a UHD sized quad split and the converter can split it up into four individual HD sized SDI feeds again, going into four separate monitors. Now with our monitors set up, let's create our channels. We're working with a simple two camera setup, an old Blackmagic camera connected via SDI and an iPhone connected via NDI. Note that in Life Assist there are no limitations as to which resolution or number of cameras you can connect. Literally, your hardware is the only limit to what you can pipe through. Back to our channels. We create the first channel choosing video capture and our decklink card's input channel. There's our picture. Let's add our Bcam as well by choosing the corresponding NDI channel. Each channel has a metadata dropdown, which is quite important because if set correctly, it allows Live Assist to capture all sorts of metadata from the SDI signal, but most importantly, also recognize the record trigger if you want to use auto record. In my particular case here, the camera won't send a record trigger, so I can just leave this to none. Next is the send to monitor dropdown. The A cam shall go out via NDI while the B cam shall go out the SDI on my Decklink card. If I choose the same output for more than one channel, Life Assist will automatically create a video wall output. So right now, we'd be looking at a simple two-up side-by-side -side view. With four cameras, it would be a quad split and so on. Up to 16 cameras. The last thing to check before jumping into the project is the record tab. In here we can not only configure the location we want to record to, but also the codec to record in. Life Assist supports H.264, DNX and ProRes on both macOS and Windows. For the 4x4 flavors, Life Assist can also record an alpha channel if we pull the key in a green screen environment. Auto Increment Take will increment the take number automatically after recording has stopped for a certain take. The synchronized playback option will sync clips based on timecode upon replay. This obviously requires all cameras to have proper timecode. Ok, we can finally jump into the project by hitting the OK button at the bottom of the setup dialog. On the right we have the metadata stack which for now we can deactivate by swiping to the right or hitting W on our keyboard. On the left we have the channel controller which allows us to dial in shooting day, scene and take numbers. We can also select a specific camera in order to view it here, or work on it in the ColorFX tab. We can enable and disable the channel controller by hitting Q on our keyboard, or by clicking this button right here. Next to it is the Setup button that will bring us back to the Setup menu, and the Guides button which will let us configure frame lines, which we can then enable for each monitor output here in the Monitors tab. 
As you can see, we are currently always looking at one camera at a time. We can configure Live Assist to show different views with the buttons down here. For instance, a split view using hotkey S. We can choose what should be displayed on the right side using this drop-down and can now wipe back and forth between the two. This icon or hotkey D gives us a dual view and the multi-view option allows us to see all cameras at once in a single view. By the way, you can zoom by holding down Alt and dragging up and down or using your mouse wheel. Hold space and drag to position the image in the viewport. Finally, let's record something. For this, I'll enable the All button here because I want to record all connected cameras, not only the selected one. Hit R on our keyboard to start recording. Pressing I on our keyboard will set an endpoint. Now we can go for some crazy camera action. Actually, that wasn't crazy enough, so let's keep the camera rolling, quickly set a marker by pressing hotkey M and try it again. Yeah, that's crazy enough for my taste. We can set an out point via hotkey O or just stop recording. The just recorded clips show up in the list down here. From here, we can select either one of the two and hit the replay button. What Live Assist now does is this. It replaces the live input for every channel with the just recorded file and plays those out through the designated outputs. Using control and left right arrow keys, I can jump to in and out points as well as the markers on the timeline. I can change playback speed by control clicking this button, which also changes playback behavior from loop to bounce or once. If I want to review a clip without playing it out to all monitors, I can instead use the show option here. This opens up dual view. On the left I can still see my live signals, while on the right I can inspect the recorded clip with only me seeing it here on the UI monitor. Let's quickly do another recording and set the shooting day to day 2 and scene to number 3. Record, action and stop. Eventually this list here will grow. To give it a bit more screen real estate you can pull it up here with a little gripper. It also features a very convenient search function. Typing in D1 I can have it show me everything shot on day 1. Typing in S3 I can have it show me all recordings for scene 3 and so on. I can of course also combine any of these parameters and search for instance for day 2 and scene 3. The results of that search or actually anything shown in this list even without a search can be filtered using the filters on the left. I can choose to only show clips from the ACAM or certain recording tags, etc. On the far right I have a thumbnail view of either the selected clip or all clips of the current list depending on this setting here. That's it for this video, I hope you now have a good overview of how to set up Live Assist and perform simple record and playback tasks. See you next time, bye!